Good day, friends. I'm Kerry Dillinger. This is Bible Class Topics. We want to start a lesson concerning the tears of Jesus based on John 11:35, And we're going to break it down into two videos. So this will be lesson one. Here's how we'll break down the study. First, in this lesson, we'll have a short introduction and we'll discuss Jesus as he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. In part two, which, Lord willing, we will publish here on YouTube sometime next week, we will see when Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem. And we'll close out that study by discussing Jesus as he wept in the Garden of Gethsemane. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Maybe the most powerful sentence ever written, Jesus shed tears. He shared the same feelings of compassion, anger, frustration, and sorrow as you and me. The scriptures reveal to us at least three occasions on which Jesus shed tears. Get your Bibles out and let's turn to John chapter 11 where we will read a very lengthy reading, verses 1 through 44. We want to try to discover what do the tears of Jesus tell us today. John 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was so ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let's go up to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Verse 17. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, shall he yet live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Verse 28. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. 
Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but he was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? Then they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Verse 38. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. One thing that the tears of Jesus shed at the tomb of Lazarus tells us is of his human nature and his feelings. The Gospel of Mark reveals to us the Son of Man, Jesus of Nazareth. Even more so, Mark portrays Jesus as a servant of action. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10:44. Mark 10:45. I beg your pardon. Well, let's think about Mark's gospel and the portrayal that Jesus has in that short gospel, the shortest of the four gospels. We will see Mark, Mark's Jesus, the one that he portrays for us, is full of feeling and emotion. Let me give you this chart, and I'll leave it up for a moment or two so that you can take a screenshot if you wish. But in Mark's Gospel account, we see Jesus is full of feeling and emotion. We know that he loved the little children, Mark 10, 16. He reached and took a damsel by the hand, Mark 5, 41. We know that he was angry, Mark 3, 5. We know that he felt love, Mark 10, 21. He sighed, Mark 7, 34 and Mark 8. 12. He had compassion, Mark 6.34. He became hungry, Mark 11.12. He became tired, Mark 6.31. He took his rest in sleep, Mark 4.38. What do we see from the tears of Jesus as he wept at the tomb of Lazarus? We see his human nature, and we see his feelings. We also see his sympathy. Jesus wept tears of sympathy. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were close and dear friends of his. Jesus felt their sorrow and shared their tears. The Hebrew writer said, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15. Previously in that letter, the Hebrew writer in chapter 2 said, Therefore in all things he, that is Jesus, had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. 
Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. So what do his tears tell us? They tell us of his human nature and his feelings. They tell us of his sympathy. His tears at the tomb of Lazarus tell us of his love. Those around him proclaimed, see how he loved him? He loved Lazarus as a friend. How great a love that was. It was the kind of love that brought tears to his eyes. Do you know the hymn, Does Jesus Care? by Frank E. Grafe? Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long? Does Jesus care when my way is dark with nameless dread and fear? As the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Does Jesus care when I've tried and failed to resist some temptation strong when for my deep grief there is no relief though my tears flow all the night long? Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me and my sad heart Sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it aught to him? Does he see? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves all of his children. Jesus shed tears for those who are lost in sin, and he grieves for those who have strayed away from the truth. He weeps for every soul, even the ones who will be eternally lost. If we turn back to John 15, verses 13 through 15, we hear him say, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father I have made known unto you. So what do his tears at the tomb of Lazarus tell us? They tell us of his human nature and feelings, of his sympathy, of his love. And they tell us also of his anger. Jesus' tears were also tears of anger. Jesus was angry at sin. He was angry at Satan. He was angry at death. God has no joy in the death of men. God is angry at death. Listen to the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 18 verses 31 and 32. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. That brings our first lesson in this two-part series to a close. Thank you for joining me today. The outline was provided by Wayne Greeson. It can be downloaded at www.padfield.com. Your support of the channel, as always, is greatly appreciated. And I found this picture of a painting that is in the Finnish National Gallery, painted by Robert Wilhelm Ekman, depicting Jesus calling Rat Lazarus from the tomb. It's so good to, all, to study with you, and I pray that these lessons are help in your own personal Bible study. You're welcome to share them with your friends, loved ones, and neighbors. Until we meet again, may God bless.